March 17, 1985 in Rosemead. Uh, two things I want to get into in a little detail here. Um, this is Maria Hernandez, right? And, yes. Uh, Dale... Dale Okazaki. Dale Okazaki. So Maria's coming home, opens a garage door, pulls into the garage, and I guess the Night Stalker follows her into the garage, Gil. Am I correct about that? Yes, yes. But instead of just shooting her from behind or attacking her or whatever, it seems like he made a deliberate noise. He banged on the car or he banged on something, right? And yes. I, I thought it was interesting that what did you call that? A deviancy or something like that? And it went back to something you said you'd learned in college. Yes, a sign of sexual deviancy. Uh, best instructor I've ever had. Brilliant man, retired FBI agent, Robert, Dr. Robert Morneau. And he was just brilliant. And I took two semesters of advanced criminal investigation pertaining to sex crimes. And it required more work than I had ever done. And he was such a good instructor. And he used humor as his vehicle to get his points across. I asked him at the beginning, do you mind if we tape record you? And he said, I don't care. Do whatever you want. I recorded every one of his classes. Every class that I recorded was totally useless to me afterwards because all you do is hear me laughing, covering <laughs> up his instruction. And, and, but he was good. He says that when somebody comes up, someone like would be a Richard mm -hmm. and pointed a gun at your forehead as he's walking up to you. He's, he's not, his intent is not to shoot you. He wants, he's looking for that fear. He wants to see the terror, fear in your eyes. That is foreplay for sex to him. That is a sign of sexual deviancy. Now, if you can imagine being a young investigator, the youngest in the bureau, trying to sell that theory to somebody, they're gonna say, you're full of hot air. And that's essentially what happened. Though I didn't sit there and say, Ha, huh, that's what he did the first night. But then, you know, at, with, with Maria Hernandez, but then he goes inside and he shoots. What happened was Maria Hernandez is holding a set of keys in her hand. He shoots her. She had already hit the close button on the garage door, time that takes eight seconds from the time he hit the button to the garage door to close and the light go out. Richard hit the top of a car that was parked in there, Dale Okazaki's car. Uh -huh. He's walking on a piece of carpet runner just so they have something to walk on. And so he's quite, he slaps the roof of their, the car to get her to turn around. And so I'm questioning, you know, why is he making a deliberate noise? Uh, he wanted her to see him. And he comes walking at her point shoulder. And just before he pulled, he's pulling the trigger, the lights go out. Richard will tell me later, he thought that he was in hell. He thought he was dead because his ears were ringing. He was blind now because the lights went out. He just flashed the lights and his ears are ringing. He thought he was dead initially. Maria went down to the ground from the impact. He then just pushed her legs out of the way. She had already unlocked the door. He goes inside the condo proper. Maria, the bullet never exited her hand. She had her hands right in front of her face. He never exited. She jumps up, hits the garage door and runs out through the garage, through the back alley. And as she's running, she hears a second gunshot. So she goes around the building to the front, feeling that Richard is going to go ahead and escape the same way he went in through the garage door. And instead, he comes right out the front door, sees her on the other side. They play a little cat and mouse around Volkswagen. She finally puts her hands in the air and says, don't shoot me again. You've already shot me once. And he put the gun down by his side and walked away. He did not run. And they hear a car speeding away around a corner, but he never did run away. He, he walked away simply. An autopsy, and then we, we learn, uh, Dale Okazaki, she is shot right in the forehead. I mean, you couldn't get a better 10 ring shot. And there was stippling all around it, mm -hmm. which for those who don't understand, that's the unburnt uh, powder from the gun that comes out of the barrel. And it actually creates what we call a tattooing. It creates burn marks in your head. Well, that tells us how close he was. And what it, what it did was she was on one side of a kitchen counter. He was on the other. He was quiet. He wasn't moving. He was waiting for her to get up. She put her hands on the ledge of a, uh, the countertop and lifted her head up to see where he was. He was on the other side waiting for her to lift her head up. 
and then he popped her right in the head. At autopsy, we learned she's got a, an abrasion in the back of her head. So that told me he hit her in the back of the head with a gun first. Why didn't he shoot her when he had the chance? Yet he hit her in the back of the head. Then he waited on the other side of the countertop for her to stick her head up. Now, that to me was something that's, this guy's different. You know, why, why did he make the deliberate sound? Why did he wait after we find the abrasion in the back of the head? Why didn't he just kill her when she was down? Right. I, and, and he didn't. So things started just, it didn't add up to me. 